This week on TGC News, a pistol caliber bullpup, the new Walther PPS, and the results of the straw poll are in. The Gen 3 handguards from Midwest Industry are a slim, lightweight option for your AR-15. Available in five different lengths in both key mod and M-Lock, they come standard with five QD attachment points, as well as their patent-pending torque plate system. To get 10% off the Gen 3 M, K, ML, and KL rails, use the code TGCGEN3, all caps, at MidwestIndustriesInc.com. Welcome back, my name is John Patton, and you guys know that I am the first to admit when I get something wrong. I mentioned in last week's show that EOTech was giving gift certificates instead of actual refunds for their optics, and it turns out that was a hoax. My understanding is that refunds haven't even started going out yet, so I guess we'll see what actually happens with that. Thanks to those of you guys that were able to show me the correct information on that one. Now, this week's first story comes as a suggestion from TGC viewer Matt from LFD Research. I'll put a link in the description. They've got a YouTube channel that you guys should check out. The story is about a company that's off the beaten path. It's a small company based out of Iowa called Jarred Incorporated. I'd heard of them prior to this because of their AR-15 triggers, but have had zero opportunity to actually try one of them, let alone try this new gun to add to their already staggering lineup of guns. It's rare to see a company that flies under the radar doing so many different models. Anyway, Jard recently released a new pistol caliber bullpup rifle called the J67. I gotta admit, the first thing I thought was, wow, that's fugly. It looks like something that would have passed for futuristic back in 1993. But after digging a bit, I think it's pretty interesting. I mean, you almost never see a pistol caliber bullpup, so you get the extra velocity from the 16 and 3 quarter inch barrel and the compact size, but on top of that, this one ejects spent casings out of the bottom of the gun instead of out the side. I think that's pretty smart. I shot Max Keltec RDB that has the bottom eject as well, and I really, really enjoyed shooting that, so it's cool to see that concept on other rifles. It also features ambi controls, which is almost becoming standard these days. One of the other things that caught my eye was the disassembly. It's super simple. You just unscrew the gigantic knob on the front of the lower and then pull it all apart. The bolt assembly comes out of the rear of the upper and you have access to the barrel for cleaning. It's pretty cool to see such a simple design on a new rifle. It appears to be an all metal construction, so my thought was that it was gonna be super heavy, but Matt actually tells me that it weighs in at seven pounds, which is less than the IWI Tavor. Unfortunately, there are always downsides. The downside here is the MSRP of $899. I'm not saying it's not worth that much, but I am saying that the price tag will scare off a lot of people from a company that doesn't have a lot of visible history to back that up. This is one of those guns that I really just want to try out and see if it's truly worth that big old price tag. What do you guys think? Is a pistol caliber bullpup on your list of guns to buy? And in, I love it when you guys send in stories news, someone screwed up and leaked a press release about the new Walther PPS M2. The original PPS was released back in 2007 and at the time was a front runner for slim carry guns. There really wasn't much like it. I personally thought it was uncomfortable to shoot because of its overly square grips and apparently I'm not alone because this is the new PPS M2. I know the picture isn't the best, but this is what we have to work with when a story gets leaked. It appears that they've taken the outstanding ergonomics from the PPQ and melted that gun into the PPS. I know finger grooves have a love them or hate them reputation in the gun world, and I happen to fall on the side of freaking loving them. I think the Walther PPQ is one of the most comfortable guns ever made. The PPS M2 leaves me a bit confused though. Walther just released the CCP not that long ago, and now they're releasing this, which pretty much fills the same roles. The other thing I find confusing is the six pound trigger pull. In a market where everyone is pushing towards light and clean, Walther says, no, 
we're going mid-weight and smooth. Another thing to note is that the sample images of the PPS M2 do not show any Picatinny rails for attachments, which would seem to make the CCP a better call. I suppose time will tell, because this gun's gonna be available at SHOT Show, and I know we're gonna hear about it if it sucks. <laughs> The results are in. A few weeks back, I asked you guys to vote on the type of content that you want to see here on The Gun Collective, and you guys delivered. Let me first say thank you to those that voiced their opinions. There were over 2,000 total votes, which is freaking crazy. You know, when TGC was conceived, I knew from day one that it was never going to be just news. I love making TGC news for you guys every week, and that's not gonna stop, but oh boy, did you guys tell me you want more. <laughs> on the poll, I asked, what type of videos do you guys wanna see on TGC? With the choices being just TGC news, full-on product reviews, how-to guides, machine guns, factory tours, ammo-specific videos, and other. <laughs> I was actually pretty surprised at the results. At the bottom of the list, we have the other category, and while some people did make suggestions, it only ended up with a whopping 2% of the vote. It's not really shocking. Above that was machine guns with 11% of the vote, and I think you guys are pretty much tired of seeing guns that you can't buy. <laughs> Next highest was ammo-specific videos with 13% of the vote. This is something I definitely want to get into as time goes on because I do have the high-speed camera, but it's not going to be a priority with the percentage of people wanting that to happen. Next up was factory tours with 15% of the vote. I've actually already had offers to do these because of this poll that we're talking about, so that's definitely going to be a thing. And now we're getting into the top three with 17% of the vote, how-to guides. I'm happy about this one because I really enjoy educating people as much as I can, and I've got a ton of ideas and a very different approach coming for that category. A lot different than most gun channels do things. At number two with 21% of the vote as of last night was just TGC News. Now, I know there are people out there that just want this to be a news channel, but I think most people chose that because they love the news and they want it to continue, which is freaking awesome. And number one, number one, <laughs> with just a few more votes, is full-on product reviews. I was actually really surprised about this one. With the amount of people doing reviews these days, I figured people would just skip right past that and not want to see more reviews, but as some of you pointed out on Facebook, the reason you want product reviews is because I don't sugarcoat things. The honesty combined with the high quality of production that has become a staple for me is a big reason I think people want to see me doing reviews. There is a catch though. I'm going to pull back the curtain a little bit for you guys and say that I've had a lot of requests for reviews and other types of videos since the beginning of TGC, and I want to do those things properly. In order for me to do these reviews the way they need to be done, I'm going to have to expand my team. Even though it didn't start this way, TGC has actually been a one-man show for quite a while now, and I plan on bringing more people on the team to be able to handle the huge amount of high quality content that I want to bring to you guys. Now, it may take some time, but these ideas that you guys voted for will be coming. So thank you for all the votes, and 2016 is going to be a really interesting year. This week's friendly fire question is from Bart Hatch on Instagram, and he asks, what exactly do all the different shotgun chokes do? This is a great question because I think a lot of people get confused by this. Basically, chokes modify the pattern of shot pellets as they leave your gun by slightly changing the inner diameter of the barrel. You have five basic types. Cylinder choke is the most open. Then you have improved cylinder, modified, improved modified, and full. There are tons of variations around those, but those are the core. Cylinder is what you're gonna find on most defensive shotguns, while you would want something like a full choke for certain hunting applications. 
Modified is kind of an all-around choke. <laughs> I know that's a lot to kind of absorb, and I hope that helps. My friendly fire question to you guys this week, being that it's Christmas week, is what gun stuff do you guys want to get for Christmas? Let me know down in the comments, and if you want your question answered right here on the show, you can post that over on Facebook.com slash The Gun Collective, or post it on Instagram and Twitter using hashtag Friendly Fire. The scarging handle from Kinetic Development Group offers an ergonomic way to manipulate your FN SCAR rifle. Able to be used on both sides of the gun as well as flipped upside down for a different angle of approach, this textured contoured handle is brand new from KDG. To get 10% off your entire order on KineticDG.com, use the code TGC10. And unfortunately, that is it for this week's show. Guys, you know what to do if you enjoyed the episode. Give it that thumbs up. If you didn't, let me know down in the comments so we can talk about it. Do not forget to subscribe. You won't want to miss a single week of the show. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. Hey, did you watch last week's show? Or maybe the one before that? And did you subscribe yet? You need to do that. Click right here to subscribe. Do it now.